Welcome everyone to German Tour Reviews. Today we have something a bit different. We're going to take a look at the Steinel HL2020E electronic control heat gun. For anyone that has ever worked in an electrical shop, you've probably seen at least a couple Steinel heat guns over the years, as they are one of the higher end brands for hot air tools. They are headquartered in Germany, but most of their manufacturing is now located in Romania. I got this particular model as part of the silver kit for the HL2020, which includes a case and a couple of accessories along with the heat gun. The set comes in this rather cheap case that does have the Steinel branding on the outside, which should serve sufficient as a minimalist storage option. The contents of this particular set are the following. The HL2020E heat gun, five nozzle attachments, keys for the case, a plastic welding rod assortment, and a small sampling of heat shrink tubing. I'm not going to go into too much detail on these accessories, focusing more on the actual heat gun in this review. On the back of the box, you can see some examples of the typical applications for a hot air gun such as this, along with a picture of each of the accessories that you can get with it. Some of these, but not all, are included with the set. So let's go ahead and unbox this thing. Included in the box are just the heat gun and the manual. Quickly looking at the manual, here are the specs for anyone who is interested. As noted, it has a maximum output temperature of 1150 degrees Fahrenheit. Key thing to point out here is that it only has a one year warranty. Even for a power tool, this does seem a bit on the short side but I believe this is more because it's used in an industrial setting other than a typical homeowner tool. Now looking at the power cord, it is an SJO 14 American wire gauge, 90 degree C cable at 6 feet in length. Compare this to one of my other cheaper heat guns that only uses SJ16 American wire gauge cord. So they really didn't cheap out on the power cord, but I probably would have liked to see it rated for a bit higher temperature considering the intended application of the tool. Now getting into the actual tool, the first thing I noticed is that the power cord strain relief seems a bit oversized for the diameter of the cord used. I felt like that could have been a bit tighter. The on off controls are on the back side of the handle, which on most heat guns is on the opposite side. After using it for a bit, I actually prefer this orientation. There are three basic on off controls. Zero for off, one for low constant heat, two for computer controlled heat at a low flow rate, and three for computer controlled heat at a high flow rate. For the two controlled settings, the manual indicates that the flow rate will be between 4 and 8 cubic feet per minute on the low setting, and between 6 and 13 cubic feet per minute on the high setting. I'm guessing that the internal microcontroller will use the fan in addition to the heating element to regulate the temperature, which is why there can be a bit of variation there. The on-off controls feel like a spring-loaded range switch, typically what you might see like on a multimeter dial, except this one moves in a linear direction. The controls for the temperature adjustment feel a bit different, with the feeling of more like a tactile button. Turning it on for the first time, you'll notice that this is a very quiet heat gun, especially in the low settings. The first setting puts out a constant temperature of 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, the default temperature display is in Fahrenheit. This must be something that is set regionally from the factory, as I saw no mention in the manual on how to switch units if you wanted to. With the switch in position 2 or 3, you can use the plus and minus buttons to change the set point temperature. The degree Fahrenheit unit display will flash while regulating to this new temperature. Once the set point has been reached, the unit display will stop flashing. Moving back to the 1 position, the display will then show the current temperature of the nozzle as it regulates back down to 120 degrees. I was always taught that you should run the heat gun on the coldest setting when you are finished to prolong the life of the components. I didn't see anything specifically about this in the manual, so I'm sure it's designed that you don't explicitly have to do that. The tool actually does save the last setting that you use for positions 2 and 3 when you turn it completely off. Even after I unplugged it briefly, it still saved the setting, so I'm pretty sure it is using a capacitor to keep this in memory for some period of time. Once the tool has been on for 90 seconds, there is a red indicator on the top of the tool that will illuminate or flash to indicate that the nozzle is still hot. This is called the residual heat indicator and will stay on even if the tool is unplugged and will remain on until the nozzle of the tool drops below 140 degrees. There are quite a few situations where you need to have a precision heat source to make sure adjacent items don't get too hot. Recently had a situation where I was adding some heat shrink tubing to the leads of a very old motor in which the existing cloth installation was becoming brittle. I was concerned about using too much heat here because of the proximity to the windings and wanted to make sure I didn't melt away any of the protective lacquer on the existing windings. Using the precision nozzle attachment and a quite low temperature of 400 degrees Fahrenheit, I was able to get it shrunk with no problem, damaging the windings. In this particular kit, there are also attachments that are specifically used for heat shrink tubing that work great when you have sufficient clearance. To wrap it up, I really didn't see much that I didn't like about the tool, but I believe that is to be expected for a professional tool such as this that is intended to be in use for hours a day. I did notice that the metal work on these attachments was not all that great, and I even needed to remove a large burr on one of them. However, I believe that universal attachments should work for the tools, so there may be better options out there. If I had to nitpick at anything negative about this heat gun, it would probably be that it uses a brushed motor that is only rated for 600 hours. 
From the parts list, it doesn't look like they sell the brushes separately, but instead the entire motor as an assembly. Chanel does have higher end models with brushless motors, but at a premium price. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that look at the Chanel 2020E digital heat gun. Check out the link in the description of the four of you. There are also some affiliate links in the description if you feel the urge to pick this unit up. Have a good week, and I'll catch you guys next time.